uh, thank you for the invitation. It's uh, an honor being here um, for the second time. Um, my talk today is about the approaches to metastatic bone disease. How, as an interventional radiologist, being part of an MDT team, can we approach a case of metastatic bone cancer? It is known that malignant osseous neoplasm are a common problem. Probably metastatic cancer is being the commonest neoplasm involving the skeletal system, with complications resulting from the malignant skeletal neoplasm, including pain, fractures, and decreased mobility. And these complications represent an important factor for impaired life quality in patients with cancer. For decades, the treatment was usually localized therapy, including radiation and surgery, not involving the radiologist or interventional radiologist, systemic therapy, such as chemotherapy, etc. And at the end stage patients, uh, analgesic uh, agents such as opioids or uh, whatever. During the past decade, however, interventional radiology has played an, a major important role and become, it became a very uh, 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 formidable tool in the management of numerous oncology-related problems. While palliative treatment is, is in, of painful, painful bone metastasis is the most common target for, for us as interventional geologists, however, its curative role is recently expanding, uh, and I'll talk about it later. This is the scheme proposed by uh, Professor Afsan Janji in 2012, and I, I take the scheme as the, the go-to scheme of how to approach uh, the bone tumor management, and we've tried to not modify it, but change it a little bit so we can uh, approach it here. So how do we approach bone metastases, either by adjuvant therapies, which is preoperative devascularization, or peri-radiotherapy consolidation, curative therapies, such as thermal ablation, plus or minus the need of consolidation, and we'll talk about it, and palliative therapies and where you cannot cure the patient, but actually just leave his symptoms or stabilize the patient. First, the adjuvant, perioperative embolization, which is preoperative embolization or devascularization of highly vascular tumors. We go into the artery, embolize the vessel, uh, it decreases the blood loss, takes a few, uh, a few, few blood transfusions during surgery, and uh, reduces the time uh, uh, for post-ICU uh, uh, care. The timing of surgery is usually the same day or 48 hours following embolization. The most common pathologies we see are HCCs, RCCs, hepatocellular carcinoma metastasis to bone, <laughs> renal cell carcinoma metastasis to bone, and thyroid cancer. While the most common locations are the pelvis, the spine, and the proximal femur. Again, the vascular blush, uh, the vascular blush, the post-embolization, the vascular blush and post-embolization, the patient can go to surgery relatively safely. Coming to the radiotherapy, we call it a peri-radiotherapy because we can do it before radiotherapy and we can do it after radiotherapy. When we decide for cementoplasty first, when the risk of pathological fracture is high, we score the patient. If he's stable, he can go for radiotherapy. If we score the patient, if he's unstable, we can go for a vertebroplasty or cementoplasty first. And usually in the lytic lesions with massive osteolysis. Okay, this is a case, bronchogenic carcinoma, structural uh, metastatic to spine, structural collapse of the spine, active on bone scan, we go, a needle, inject semen, the patient is stable, you can go on for radiotherapy after. When do we go for radiotherapy first? When the radiotherapy is planned for curative intent, some centers are concerned about the cement displacing cells into the circulation, to tumor cells into the circulation, or the carfloss or whatever we inject, and so they, they, they prefer to go for radiotherapy first, and then we inject cement. Okay. Or there is an epidural extension for the risk of cement leak, higher risk of cement leak, or that the cement displaces the tumor and causes neurological symptoms, which is a However, when we're using stereotactic bone radiotherapy, there's a risk of vertebral compression fractures approaching 40%, from 15 to 40%, and you always should consider or, or advise the clinicians to go for a vertebral prostate after. This case was a male patient. He, had seven, he was 73 years old, no uh, uh, metastatic cancer prostate, received radiotherapy. He presented later with a pathological fracture of the uh, sacrum bilateral with osteosclerosis, went in, injected cement, the patient went well. How about the curative role? The curative role is mainly concerned via interventional radiology is concerned about ablation. We treat this patient by ablating the lesion, okay? The curative ablation is intended in patients with oligometastatic disease, a small number, three to five potentially treatable cases, oligorecurrent, three to five which are recurrent after radiotherapy or after surgery. Each is less than three centimeters usually, maybe five centimeters in cryoablation, and you have a safety margin which does not compromise major neurostructures around this lesion. Most, most, abla radi most ablation, radiofrequency, cryo, microwave, and MRI, MR guided hypho, are locally tumor, the local tumor control is almost equal, provided the experience is there. Okay? However, 
bone lesions where there's, uh, in the weight-bearing bone areas, there is a risk of pathological fracture after the ablation because the bone is weakened. We usually go for stabilization, either bone consolidation or augmentation. This is a case. She was a female patient. She was 33. She had metastatic renal cell carcinoma, one to the rib and one to the uh, iliac bone. This is not a weight-bearing area. This is a potentially weight-bearing area. We went in, radiofrequency ablation, radiofrequency ablation. We injected cement in the ileum to fill the lesion. This is the follow-up after four months. We had a significant reduction in the uh, uh, metastatic deposit. And here we have bone sclerosis filling up the cement, denoting an adequate control, which was ne negative on PET. While the palliative control, we have two major arms. You need to score the patient. Is he a stable patient or an unstable patient? If he's, st if he's unstable, you go for consolidation. You need to consolidate. But before or after thermal ablation, that's another issue. So you need to consolidate. You have to consider consolidation. In the pa in, if there is no need for consolidation in a stable patient or if the patient uh, uh, is in a non web area, you know, do not need consolidation. You usually go for thermal ablation or embolization. The palliative is via stabilization, the spine, pelvis, and the proximal femur. The palliative is local pain control, either by ablation or cement injection, and to control local tumor progression. If you think the tumor, if it expands further, it will compromise a major neural structure or the spine. How do we score instability? The most common score we know of the spine, we, you go for a spine instability in your plastic score, which is the SINs. Okay? We go for the location, if there's pain or not, and the type of pain, the bone lesion is lytic or mixed, whatever, spinal alignment, vertebral body collapse, and posterior element involvement. We give the score 0 to 6, 7 to 12, which is indeterminate or possible instability, and 13 to 18 in, includes instability. Uh, there are other scores for the acetabulum or the pelvis, and there are scores for the lung bones. In the middle, lung bone, in the middle score, lung bones more than eight are indicated. So, what are the tools for uh, stabilization? Either cementoplasty alone, and usually conserved for the, where there's a compression force, the force coming from up to down, and it's predominantly seen in the spine, acetabulum, and condyles. Okay? Or we go for osteosynthesis, I'll talk about later. This is a male patient. He was 51, he recently discovered multiple myeloma. He had multiple vertebral body collapses, D11, 12, and L1, since score of 10, since score of 10, since scores of 11. Again, went into the three levels in the same, injected simple cementoplasty, no fancy work. The patient went well, no pain. Another case, 62-year-old female, she had cervical cancer, she received radiotherapy, there was no relief of pain. She was considered potentially unstable with the SIN scores of 10. Uh, we, we, we borrowed the mouth gag from the, our ENT fellows. Uh, we went transoral, injected cement, and the patient went well with a stable protocol. This is another patient, acetabulum. Again, modified AAOS score of one, direct injection, filling the acetabulum. She was a very obese patient and she needed to walk. Filling the, the lesion and the surrounding sept, extending from the bone to the, to the normal bone while filling of the lesion. And this is the follow-up when the patient's pain score uh, improved and she was able to walk with a walker. About percutaneous osteosynthesis, we should placing percutaneous screws into the bone. Uh, uh, compared to cementoplasty, the screws allow for stabilization of uh, uh, torsion and tension, tension forces rather than compression forces, which is involved in a rotation force, mainly in the pelvis, in the long bones, etc. And if there is a significant fracture already present, we usually place screws, or there is cortical destruction which will not maintain the cement inside that area of bone. It will migrate later or will not uh, uh, offer enough support. This is a patient. He had a, a cancer bladder, metastatic to the bone. He had, a, he had radiotherapy. He went well for a while. Then he developed acute sharp pain. On imaging, he had a pathological fracture right here. This fracture will not heal spontaneously. It needs to be fixed. Okay? Cement will not do it, so we went on for use the comb beam CT, multi reconstruction. You see the plane uh, perpendicular to the fracture line. Um, uh, uh, through software, we w went to the bull's eye technique, placed our uh, uh, bone cannula inside the K wire, threaded a screw over the K wire, and then another screw, super stabler, injected some cement, and the patient actually went uh, uh, very well. He was able to walk with a walker uh, 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 one week later. About the palliative, there is no need of consolidation. This is an area where the bone is not weak, okay? Or we do not need consolidation. The palliative involves either thermal ablation, which is using radiofrequency, the same for uh, radiofrequency, cryo, microwave, and MR. And usually you target the bone tumor interface because this is where the most pain is, okay? And this is what a, a, a young patient, he had an aesthetic hemangiopericytoma to the pelvis, he was considered end stage, he was lying fat with bed sores. 
So we went on, we embolized first to reduce the vascularity so we can decrease the power of the RF used. We planned where, how are we going to approach the bone tumor interface, transsacroiliac and posteriorly. We went in with the needles, and this is after we ablated not the whole lesion, we don't need to cure the patient, just to ablate where the maximum pain is. Two weeks later, he was able to sit in bed at least 60 degrees, he was able to feed without uh, choking, etc. He did not live long, but at least we provided him with a, a decent quality of life at the end stages. The transalteal embolization, this again, uh, and, and usually patients who are not going for surgery, uh, uh, we can actually uh, not uh, in the contraindicate for surgery for any reason. We just simply embolize the lesion. It causes the reduction in pain by reducing the vascularity in the lesion. It reduces the stretch on the periosteum. The lesion gets smaller. And there is sometimes delayed sclerosis reported in some cases. Uh, simple technique, straightforward, and uh, quite efficient, with a low risk of complications. Once you manage, know how to manage your tools or how to use the different tools, you start to mix and match them. No one patient is perfect for a single uh, intervention procedure. For example, this patient had the metastatic HCC to the uh, um, uh, uh, pu pubic bone, okay? We went in, we used to go uh, combine CT and uh, CR. We used to take the CR, put it in the CT room at the early days before comb beam CT. Retrograde transpubic approach, inject some air to protect the obturator nerve, perform radiofrequency ablation for the lesion through, uh, through a coaxial technique, inject semen bilaterally, and then we fill the lesion with semen and the patient um, actually did well and his pain improved. Another case, he's a male patient, he had HEC metastatic to the spine, severe pain, he was unable to move. And again, hypervascular lesion, HEC is a hypervascular lesion, we need to do RF to create a cavity for the semen. So we went in embolized first, use RF to reduce the power, uh, minimize the power to reduce the risk of complications for nerve injury from the RF, and then filled the lesion with semen and the patient went well. The future involves dedicated ablation devices because the spine is very difficult to form a curative ablation in the spine due to an innate anatomy of the spine, the pedicles, and the, so the, there are new, newer devices, actually not new, they're 10 years old, but they did not arrive yet. Um, uh, uh, that's a curved needle where you can actually go through the uh, pedicle and ablate the lesion along its long axis and not along its short axis, which is usually the case, or uh, bipedicular needles which perform co controlled or ablation zones which can actually form, uh, uh, conform to the shape of the spine. The spine hardware, newer techniques uh, in the new plastic processes, it's common in the osteoporotic or collapsed process, but in the, in the uh, new plastic process, they're still under studies. Uh, um, we don't know the efficacy of it yet. And then the new kid on the block, which is the reversible extraporation. Unlike the irreversible, it's a reversible extraporation, opens the cell membrane, allowing the passage of certain chemotherapy drugs into the bone tumors. Uh, to allow for treatment uh, cure based on the uh, intravenous chemotherapy uh, uh, treatments. And uh, this is the uh, approaches. Please put it in mind whenever you see a case uh, in your NDDT team, just put the patient in his right box. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shady, for this uh, nice lecture.